agricultural machinery to lubricate the sector. It is part of a raft of measures being ruled out by the state in what some have described as a very well calculated and proper organization of this strategic sector as agriculture. Despite its enviable place in the scheme of things, as in the employment it creates, the revenue it generates, and generally holding the levers of the economy, agriculture had not been able to live down an aching drudgery for a long time until the recent interventions. Agricultural machinery will be the portrait in my backdrop in this edition of Farmers Weekly. My name is Napoleon Ato Kito. True to its promise of mechanizing agriculture, farm machinery worth about $33 million was imported from Brazil in 2019 to support the agricultural sector. The consignment was made up of 215 tractors, 231 farm implements, 141 maize shellers, 25 multi-crop treasures, 68 planters and seed drills, among other items. Made available at 40% subsidized cost to farmer associations, private investors and selected district assemblies. This was the basis for the establishment of agricultural mechanization centers, AMSEC, across the country. This became the springboard for 2020, as the government has just taken delivery of more agricultural implements having been disbursing Brazilian and Indian loan facilities to this effect. In its objective to increase local rice production to 900,000 metric tons by the end of 2020, having more than doubled production in the last three years. We have several types of farmers in the country. We have the small scale farmer, the medium scale farmer, and the large scale farmer. The small scale farmer actually is a little bit piece of equipment, like a power tiller or any handheld machine, to actually carry our activities on the farm. And the medium scale farmer may not need a big tractor, about 70, 80, 90 horsepower. About 50 horsepower, like what you are seeing now, is 50 horsepower, which a farmer with a land around 20 acres and 40 acres can equally use for his farm activities. You see, our agriculture has gone through a jump in the sense that from manual uh, land preparation, we, some people jump straight to tractors. It's even difficult for them to reverse back to use the many tractors we have. Mm -hmm. They find it very difficult. So we are now sensitizing them to accept it. As they grow, increase their acreages, then they can look for the big tractors. This one is actually gotten from the Czech Republic facility. The supply side facility. It, they are they, 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 they come with a, they, they power unit as a head. The, and other accessories attached. The farmer can use it to plant his, uh, to plant his land and sow and even do a uh, crop management, spray. Sow what you? Yes, yes, if you have a planter, you attach it. Okay. It can also sow. Okay. And you know, labor is also costly now. It's not even available. Mm. So if you have this machine, it will go and save a lot of, uh, it will cut down a lot of costs in your farming activities. Mm. To step up production to meet short-term goals, especially in reducing rice imports, the government took delivery of new machinery from Czech Republic and Brazil with an eye on further supplies from China. This particular one has got a, a front PTU here. You can attach an implement on it mm -hmm. to harvest rice. Okay. And this is an exceptional design. It, no, few of the many of, of the tractors are on the back PTU. Mm -hmm. But this one has got the front one. Mm -hmm. If you attach a, a, the cutter on it, we'll go and show, I'll show it to you. And this is also a mini tractor in the sense that so, you know, some of the soils in the north, like upper east region, the soils, the, the top soil level is very shallow. Mm. It should not plow deep. You only need to, this one will actually serve that purpose in the uh, upper east region. Mm. So it's also one of the advantages we have. Mm. And this is also good for plantation crops. If you have big trees, the big tractor cannot go in. Mm. So you can use this land to move into the alleys of a uh, plantation crop mm. and do activities. Okay. You can control weeds in it. You can use the... Uh, the orchard sprayer to mm. spray the, 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 the trees, mm. if the, the trees are uh, infected. 
So these are the advantages we have. Evidence of the impact abounds as rice farmers and those cultivating other crops are gradually easing out of dry tree. These big ones are from the Brazil. This is the, we got this from Brazil. We had a, this in a, a loan agreement with them and we bought them from Brazil. These are meant for the large scale farmers. If you say when they finish and there's a small scale farmer around, they can also render service to a small scale farmer. The small scale farmer may not be have enough money to buy this. But if they come together as a group, it's better to buy this and they can manage it well. Okay. The director of Agric Engineering, Mr. Amatus De Young, gave further insight into agronomic practices. The farmer has one acre. He is going to plant maize. He hasn't got the, 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 the quality, uh, improved seed, quality seed. It means that the, 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 the plant population on the field is going to be low. Mm. Two, if you hire labor to plant for you, they are human beings. If they get tired, they drop in so many seeds at a time. Or they even skip some of the, the holes. It means that the plant population is also very low. And that means that when you have a, a planter attached to your tractor and you plant, you are going to get the right population of seed, uh, plants in the field. It means that you are going to from the word go, you are going to make profit. Yeah. Then the plant population is very low. It means that you are, you are, you are, from the word go, you run at a loss. He said farmers who have already received these supplies are happy. The FIBA is very fantastic. They are happy that they have got them. Their operations are timely. Instead of spending about 10 days to do an activity, it can be done within one hour. How do you access these implements? If a farmer is interested in all these machines, he should apply through his district director, to the regional director, to the honorable minister of agriculture. When he approves it, it comes here, give him a location letter. And because of the bad history you have, people buy, they do part payment, and as come, we don't see them again. We insist that they should do, uh, they should, uh, do a right payment. But if the minister feels that uh, this is a, a, a cohesive group, farming group, he can give a dispensation, they can pay part, and they subsequently they pay the rest within three years. With reference to my initial or opening remarks where I said that the agricultural sector is fast becoming the most robust and well-organized sector of Ghana's economy, this is one example. These tractors are going to be distributed far and near to farmer groups, peasant farmers, and what have you. But there's a plan B to tidy up any envisaged lose ends in their operations. In the districts, artisans and mechanics have been trained to repair any damage to these implements. And so it is not likely or it's not estimated that they will break down and be left to rot away in the tilling fields. We go ahead to train the operators. You see, if you have a, a car now, you give it for renting. Now you don't have a good a driver. You, the, the driver can run your car down for you. Yeah. You'll only be spending money on it, but you're not bringing any revenue for you. So we also train the operators so that they're able to operate these uh, machines well and manage them well. They think that the owner has got so much money, I can always come and ask for money. I want this, I want that. No. We train them too. And the local agents for this machine are also available to keep them moving. Mm -hmm. If there's a fault, we call them. There's a sticker on each of them, mm -hmm. the local agent. You call him, he come and attend to you. Okay. Yeah. Another initiative in support of staple crops as cereals is irrigation, that government has embarked upon construction and rehabilitation of dams and dugouts throughout the country to ensure all year round crop farming. A total of 65,600 hectares of irrigable land has been earmarked for completion under ongoing projects at Pong, Tono, Gu, Impromem. Tame, Puyiri, Bui, and Pualugu. It is well known that as a country, you do import a lot of rice into the country. For example, this year, our demand for 
rice is calculated to be 1.3, 1.4 metric tons. And even when we even we are putting a lot of efforts to decrease that importation, and I've already indicated the provisional figures that we have targeted is they want to do 900,000 metric tons of rice. So even still, there's a deficit. So if in those days where the emphasis was not on rice production, you can see that a lot of rice was coming to the country and it was taking a lot of our current foreign exchange also to bring in a lot of rice. So the, the, the ministry wants to reduce at all the importation activities. And that it means that the foreign exchange that you would have used to import the rice into the country would be used to do other things that would benefit to the country as a whole. Mechanized tools do not exist in isolation, as improved hybrid seeds and fertilizer are also made available to farmers around the country, all within the objective of making farming lucrative and to boost agricultural output to safeguard national food security. Officials say the COVID-19 pandemic, which has regimented nations behind their own borders and restrained international trade, vindicate the several initiatives in agriculture meant to promote self-reliance. Under the planning for food and job, the government has a program to stop the importation of rice into this country by the next two years. However, we use about $1 billion annually to import rice we are doing the importation from. So we have to embark on massive rice production so that the money will remain in this country. Then we went around last year and listening to these rice farmers and other farmers, their, their concerns, what are the bottlenecks in their work? That especially the rice farmers made us to understand that they need treasures and cutters for their harvesting so that the harvesting will be easier because it's very difficult for them to do the harvesting. So the minister realized that we need these small, small machines. Because don't forget, especially the southern sector here, the rice valleys are very small, small areas. So they need small machines so that that will enable them to do their harvesting. That is why we brought this machine for them to see. We have about 1,000 pieces we are going to distribute across the country, through all the southern sector, the rice valleys, to enable the farmers harvest their, their rice and use the machine to do the threshing. This further accentuates the national drive, which has already scored positive results under the UN Sustainable Development Goals, such as drastic reduction in poverty and a drastic reduction in hunger in Ghana. These highlights the steady progress Ghana has made over the long years with the farming that hit the nation in 1983 as the lowest ebb or the baseline fresh in the minds of citizens who are aged 50 years and above who lived the period. A policy like planting for food and jobs demonstrates a well thought out plan with targets and strategic interventions to ensure a cadence between the blueprint and actuals on the ground. Our plans are on target uh, in terms of the number of beneficiaries, the distribution of the impulse. Uh, there have been complaints about some delay in the impulse, especially for vegetable farmers and so on. All these we have taken on board to help us to plan for 2021. These are all very new things to farmers and they needed someone to hold their hand into the practice of applying these uh, inputs and thank God Nana Kufuado is someone who is very supportive of our farmers. In addition to all that have been said, one area the government has been applying to agriculture is research. A Canadian grant to modernize agriculture in Ghana known by the acronym MAG, is being used to deepen the interface between research and farmers. The forum where strategies are mapped out is called the Research Extension Agriculture Linkages Committee, REALC. This group's policy makers, agricultural research scientists, farmers and other key stakeholders. At this level, needs of farmers are taken into account by researchers ultimately to be formulated into policy to decisively address situations. This is one such real meeting held in Accra. It is important for us to remember that 
Our farmers have done very well over the years. And these have become possible because we as researchers, agricultural experts, extension agents, and members of the RELCs have all contributed our quota to the success that we are currently achieving in the area of agricultural productivity. We are here to uh, discuss issues concerning the research, researcher, farmer, extension linkage committees. And we want to be sure that by the time we leave here, we would have discussed thoroughly the issues that have confronted our farmers over the year that has just passed or is passing and plan for the year which is coming ahead of us. MAG might fail to make desirable impact without agricultural extension officers who will reach out to farmers with new knowledge on agronomic practices. Thus, the government employed 2,700 new extension officers and gave them motorbikes to enhance their outreach programs in farming areas. This motorbike is a very big opportunity assisting me to be able to visit my farmers and it has also helped me that I can attend to more or thrice the number that I was, when I was working. I can only go to two or three communities. But this time, with this motorbike, always they give me fuel. Maintenance is done for me. Even right now, yesterday, they did my insurance, everything. So when I am on the road, I am safe to assist my farmers. And one thing I also like is when I see my farmers uh, produce, I've come and it's in large quantity that I might. And then I also try to link my farmers, the maize farmers, to a poultry farmer. So I was able to link all those people who were not getting market for their harvested maize to two or three poultry farmers within the municipality. We are working closely with Farm Radio International to train our district staff on the use of radio. Already most of the regions and the districts, are like uh, one of the extension officers said, are using radio, but we will intensify it. Uh, we have seen many of them capture it in their MAC program to use radio because during the REC planning, the research extension linkage committee district level planning sessions, it came up and most of them have captured radio as one of the means. So post COVID-19, uh, we need the human resource to do the face-to-face -face interaction, but we'll complement it with the use of digital platforms, uh, uh, IVR, where messages will be sent to the farmer in the language of the choice of the farmer when the time is due for planting, where that information will be sent. But we cannot dispense with the services of agriculture extension agents. As we speak now, we are still making efforts to see if we can add on to the numbers that were added. Another critical area where the interventions may be felt is in the area of women in agriculture. According to sources in the sector ministry, policies are being fashioned out to ensure that women are allocated 40% of slots in all agricultural initiatives to be embarked upon by government. When it comes to consumption, we are trying, but we need to engage research because we need to know the attributes of our food. Women are putting things together in the various kitchens, wherever, to put food on the table for us. And they need to know the attributes of our local foods in order for us to benefit from the foods we grow here. The directorate responsible for women in agriculture has also welcomed the easy to handle agricultural machinery, which have been brought in as suitable for use by women. We know we have a lot of small-scale or smallholder farmers. A lot of them are women. And uh, for our policies, where modernizing of agriculture has centered on 
the provisioning of tractors. Now we are looking at handheld devices, which the women can easily manage. If you've listened to the news of late, the threshers for rice and the slashes, these are things which women can easily manage. Because if you are producing rice, and I know there are women who are producing rice at various uh, scales, large, medium, small, and even micro. And if you don't have slashes and you have to use the sickle to harvest rice, it is a lot of trouble. So now the ministry has made available these um, equipment to support especially rice harvesting and also some other grain. And that will go a long way to help the women. Then said, it must be noted also that a lot of efforts are being made at the other end of the continuum which is terming post-harvest losses. For the past three years, we have succeeded a lot in the element of production. What we are, limit, we are, we are limited in is agro-processing. Currently, when we look at the agro-processing capacity for rice, for soya, for maize, it's woefully inadequate. So now we are trying to do everything possible to see how we can make agro-processing boost in the country. That is what will help our production. Traditionally, we have been living with this situation for far too long. What we normally do, these pressure bubbles are rotate in the particular times. Ghana here, between December up to May, we don't cultivate much of pressure uh, tomatoes. That is why the minister has introduced these uh, greenhouse villages. Now the greenhouse village is going to produce these tomatoes during this season I just mentioned. However, don't forget, our foods, most of the pressure bubbles are supposed to be stored. So the warehouses that we are building, they are going to convert some into cold rooms to store the pressure bubbles, especially areas like Akumada. They, that area is known for tomato production. So the minister has directed that they have to convert some of the warehouses there into cold rooms to store the, this facility. State actors have taxed researchers to find other uses and ways of preserving perishable agricultural produce. So we fill directly into the bottles and then immediately we will cover the bottle and then we will keep it in the refrigerator. When you do your production, like the pineapples, you now go into processing and then this then goes to the consumer. So we have cut short the, the um, deterioration or the... Um, wastage that goes after harvesting. So our institute does after production. So for production, we have our sister institute, the Crop Research Institute, that goes into how you can have the best varieties, the, ve the best breeds. Then we, after produced, how do you keep it? How, yes, what is the food safety? What's the shelf life of the product? What, how can you package it? How can you store it during, um, during your, um, when you have produced it, how can you store it? All these are areas, so we work very, very closely with our sister institute. Again, structures are being put in place for the marketing of agricultural produce. These include the provision of mailing machines and then the Ghana Commodities Exchange Program, whereas a good number of private sector initiatives are related to agro-processing. One thing I always say for work done, you only get your salary. For taking risk, you make profit. I do see, Ghanaians, it's about time we take risk. It is about time we take risk. The can do spirit, if you have it, you can do a lot more. Because if we, the individual Ghanaians, have built Takradi port, costing about $450 million, why can't we do $50 million project? So it is about having the capacity, the spirit, the push. You see, where there is a will, there is always a way. A distinctive feature of the new agricultural policy is that the supply of agricultural implements transcend the groups that are esoteric to the sector. Once peasant farmers are hooked to the inputs, they are likely to increase yield and, of course, ease out of subsistence. Much the same way as the larger picture will depict a clean break from the Who and Cutlass economy. My name is Napoleon Atukito. It has been my pleasure presenting to you Farmers Weekly. Put your dial here on GTV 
Wednesdays 8 p.m. with a repeat on Sundays 4 p.m. Goodbye. Thank you.